Behavioural science really looks at the mechanism of how people make decisions. Uh, there's a kind of economic thinking that says that we're all rational, logical, analytical, data-driven, evidence-based. What behavioural science suggests, however, is actually we make decisions for lots of other reasons. Uh, we can sometimes jump from A to E and miss out B, C and D. In other words, we make mental shortcuts, uh, what are known by psychologists as heuristics. Uh, I prefer to think of them as we have biases. And so really I'm looking to explore what biases we have as decision makers and what we can do about them. I think perhaps the best metaphor for the human mind, it came up by, from the psychologist Jonathan Haidt, who likened the human mind to a, a rider sitting on top of an elephant. And in his metaphor, the human being sitting on top of the elephant represents the conscious mind. And this is the part of the mind that we think we use all the time. It's logical, it's analytical, it's rational, it's evidence-based, it has a strategy. However, what Haidt tells us is we're all sitting, our conscious minds are all sitting on top of a large, silent, unconscious mind. That's the elephant. And indeed, it's from the elephant that our biases, our mental shortcuts, our habits, our addictions all come from. And so really what behavioural science tries to do is to say, look, we understand how the human mind works, the human on top of the elephant works. How does that elephant actually work? And who's making the decisions? Is it your conscious mind or is it your unconscious mind? How powerful is your elephant? And are you aware of the decisions the elephant is making? And I particularly like that because it reminds me that actually we all have an unconscious mind. And I was once talking to a bunch of CIOs and they said, oh, Paul, this is a good idea, but I can control my elephant. And I looked at one of the senior CIOs and I said, in which case, why do you bite your fingernails? Is that you being logical, rational, analytical? They do, or is that a habit that comes from the elephant? And he said, fair point. What behavioural science shows us is that some of our human biases are very strong, and sometimes our emotions overcome our rational brain. Uh, I would say that there's plenty of examples during a bubble, for example. Do you know a financial bubble? And we've seen, certainly seen plenty of those in my career. Uh, markets get driven up not just by so much by fundamentals as by sentiment and by emotion and greed. And perhaps the tech bubble of the 1990s is a good example where almost everything that was tech based went up in price uh, and we created a bubble. And even though some people were saying at the time these, these valuations aren't justified, up went the prices. Uh, my favourite example is probably a stock called Norris Communications which used to make electronic recording devices. And rather bizarrely it didn't actually enjoy the first wave of the bubble or indeed the second wave of the bubble in tech. In 1999, which was the last year of the bubble, it changed its name to eDigital. And literally, on a name change from Norris Communications to eDigital, its stock price started to rise. As people became aware of it, they jumped on board, they told their friends, it was posted on message boards, and eDigital went up from six cents to 16 cents to 60 cents to six dollars to 16 dollars, and peaked at 24 dollars and 50 cents. And nothing really had changed apart from its name change, which reminded people it was a tech company. Uh, it's not trading today.